Hi, Tim Dexter from the BI Publisher blog here with another video. This week we're focusing in on the template builder for Microsoft Word, some new features that have actually been put into the 11G release. And some good new features there are too. So long, I'll just whip through these long field names. So in uh, 10G, you'll remember you had about 500 characters for a form field. And if you needed more, you had to create another form field and another form field and another form field or break things out as an XSL template on its own. Um, you're now limited to 64,000 characters, which ought to keep all but the most ardent coder happy in terms of uh, putting functionality into your template. Style templates, um, think of those as cascading style sheets for your templates. So in, HTM, in the HTML world, this cascading style sheet provides a uh, single place to update the look and feel of your HTML pages and your HTML pages just reference those styles. RTF templates have exactly the same um, functionality but rather than writing an, uh, a cascading style sheet you create a style template as an RTF document that will contain all of the styles you might want to actually use in your layout templates including headers, footers, um, all of the headings, how you want your paragraphs to look you know with hanging indents or not lists, um, basic fonts, etc. But the idea being that all, all of your uh, layouts reference this style template such that if it comes down that we need to change our company font from Arial to Times New Roman, you are not going to go and have to touch 500 layout templates. You touch one style template and all of your other templates pick it up. Similarly with a header or a footer change. Just one place and everywhere else picks it up. Enhanced group left and running totals. So running totals, um, very doable in 10G, 11G, a couple of clicks and you have a running total working. Group left, um, for those of you who've built group left reports will know that we use nested tables in Word and Word is not great at aligning the, uh, the borders of those tables. It's very, very fiddly. You can get it to look good, but it uh, takes a little while. With um, 11G, again, a couple of clicks, and you've got a very nice looking group left report immediately. Administrator can install for a non-admin user. Pretty self-explanatory. 10G, you had to be an admin to install. You had to be an admin to run. 11G, you have to be an admin to install, but you do not have to be an admin to actually use the product. Just a step forward. Um, Word 2007 ribbon. So those of you using Word 2007, you get a nice shiny new um, BI Publisher tab on your ribbon. And then the next two cover some new chart types. So we've got two new gauges and then funnels and um, dual, dual charts. So where we've got um, dual y-axis or we need to plot multiple points and have a line and two columns that type of thing. So and I'm going to show you some of those. You may now still need to get at the uh, code behind the chart. Um, there is now a code tab on the chart dialog that lets you get into the code behind it. So you know, the, the property palette does not expose everything yet. You might still need to tweak it, but it's much easier to do. And then finally, business view support. So that's the concept of being able to um, provide a metadata layer over the top of your um, data models. So rather than your users or your report builders or layout builders working with column names or whatever the alias you might have given for your column name, they can now work with a very, very functional name <coughs> that's actually translatable as well. Now, I'm going to split these into two. So what I'm going to deal with next is the charts and the new charts that are available. And then I will have another video to cover um, things like style templates, the running totals, the group left, etc. So let me move over into Microsoft Word. And I've already logged in and I've already pulled down a report and I want to build some charts with these reports. So chart dialog. So no great changes on the chart dialog other than an enhanced set of um, properties that are available in here and an enhanced set of, uh, of chart types as well. So things have grown somewhat since 10G. Now the ones I'm interested in working with are the, you'll notice under the line graphs now we've got dual Y, dual Y split, which are actually available. 
um, there is a gauge we can, which can be a dial or a meter funnel graph which I'm not going to get into today and then the combination graphs as well which are something that I've been trying to build recently for a customer and I've had to duck into the uh, the XML behind the report to get it working so a lot of this is now supported through the front end so let's just pick combination graph to start with so we still get a preview so by combination we're going to have three measures in here um, it, by default we're looking at a line a column and an area now my data on the left is just sales by region so what I want to work with is to put region don't need to group my data in this case because I know I'm summarizing it and then drop my measures in so these are software hardware and services sales I'm going to dump out the 3D and I can hit preview so I can actually see what my chart's going to look like. So by default I get column, line, area. Well what I would actually like to see is column or bar, column and bar, so I want bar, bar, line. So through the uh, properties, I can now set everything I need. So now I'm getting the actual chart type I actually want. I'm going to click OK and leave it at that. Of course, you could get into the properties and change other stuff. Let me just make my chart a bit smaller. So that's one chart. Of course, if I highlight the chart and then hit the chart dialog again, button, chart dialog comes back everything is of course preloaded now on the advanced tab here's the XML behind that chart and of course I can go in and edit this if I wished as soon as you make an edit the chart dialog is not going to be able to pass your chart um, data anymore it will just show you the advanced tab but at least you've got a nice big area to work in so we're happy with that chart now let me show you Some gauges. So we're going to start up the chart dialog again. Now this time we're going to work with gauge and gauge will accept um, multiple dimensions if you will. So if you look at this graphic we've got the years running across the top and then we're doing we're count we're sort of gauging a measure. So in our data we can look at region but we can only look at one of these measures at a time. So let's look at software sales and preview. So you'll see we've now broken out our regions, EMEA, EMEA APAC and Americas, and then we're actually plotting the, uh, the sales for each of those regions <coughs> on, a, uh, on a dial. And you'll also notice if you can see each of those dials has an independent you know, uh, maximum value. So the first one's at 10k, the second one is at 1k, third one is at 1k. So let's actually influence that and make everything 5,000. Don't worry about a minimum. And we can also pick whether we use a line, a needle, or whether we fill. So let's fill and hit preview again. Now you can see we're actually getting a much better uh, comparison between them all. So let me hit OK. So that's the sort of dial gauge. There is, of course, then... Let me start up the chart builder again. And quickly put this together. And do a status meter. Which is just really just uh, something that I used to do in with Microsoft Word shapes, but uh, again, let me put in a maximum. So there aren't many properties to change in here. Plot color really just changes the inside bar. Background color changes the background of the whole chart area. So let me hit OK, and you can now see what these are like. I haven't investigated whether you can turn these vertically or not. 
you do want to turn them vertically and it's possible, it's going to be a case of getting into the code right now. But big steps forward. So we can quickly do a preview. Yes, we do want to save it. And here's my PDF coming through. Let me just make it a bit bigger. My combination chart, my set of dials, and my set of gauges. And that's the charting piece. So that's here endeth part one.